Hi, everyone. Uh, I'm Gold Derby News and Features Editor Ray Richmond, and I'm here today with Paulina Alexis, who starred as Willie Jack in the hit FX comedy Reservation Dogs that last year completed its third and final season. So, Paulina, let's talk first about uh, how being a part of this show has changed your life. Oh, God. Like in every way. <laughs> When it comes to like going to native events, like back home a lot, I can't go to a powwow when I can, but like, I can't like go like walk around and go stand in line for a bannock burger or really go to Walmart in like my sweats anymore. And, you know, um, yeah, I just get- You get mobbed. I get mobbed, yeah. I get, I be getting mobbed. And you didn't get mobbed before this show went on here, did you? Uh uh. <laughs> I kind of like. I kind of started get. I think I got a mob like the night, like the first episode came out. Like me and the Feral were together, walking around downtown LA after like the premiere or something or no not even the premiere the emmys i don't know but then like someone like came up to us like the night like it came out and we're like what already like that's crazy and I think word yeah. spreads quickly uh you know in the in the world of social media and everything else um <laughs> did 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 it did it surprise you that everyone responded so enthusiastically and and it was, you know, just such so instantly embraced by everyone going back to the premiere. Um, at the premiere, yes. I knew the show was gonna blow up like the second I got the audition, but I wasn't prepared for like the feeling. Like it blew up, like especially like an Indian country, native country. Like, yes, yeah, so, like especially me too at the time and like where I'm from. And Alberta, Alberta, Canada. Right. So yeah. it, it 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 was big immediately in the area where you're from. Yeah, and I think um, I went to a powwow in California, and I literally just walked in like the arbor, and like people were running from like across the arbor, and like they stopped like the whole powwow. And I had no security, nothing. And like, it was just like a bunch of people swarming me. And that was like the first year or two. And I was like, I just remember being like so overwhelmed. Like this really just happened overnight. Like, I was like, why did I do this? Just kidding. No, but I love it. And I'm I'm grateful for every opportunity. That I yeah, just, just love it. This this doesn't happen too often in your life, you know, in any actor's life. Yeah. Um, it's such a great show, though, Pauline. It's so funny and so real. Um, why did it have to end after the third season? Did Sterling just want to go out on top or what? Um, um, I am not too sure why he ended it. He said that it was good and I always wanted it to be good, which is true. It's, it's, it's really good. But honestly, I do not know. I still don't know why it ended. But And you're, you're a little shocked when it did. Yeah, I was. But I'm still so grateful for this opportunity. And a little sad that, it, that it's over. But I still like keeping it very positive about it. Like all good things come to an end and yeah the show will go on to impact my life and everyone's life in the native community it's changed a lot in and when it comes to indigenous tv and film so it really seems like it has changed so much yeah about the per about perceptions um how did you feel about the way the show wrapped the way it wrapped? The way it wrapped up and, and things were tied up at, at the end of season three. I kind of liked it because like in the beginning, you like my character specifically, Willie Jack, she goes through like a lot of 
character development and character development in the beginning you see her like kind of just like being a little shit ass and she's like kind of reckless she doesn't really care but then when it comes to like wrapping up the show she's the one who ends up like bringing everyone together again and like saying that like like yo I don't I don't usually do this but I just think that we should all be together and I just think that it's a beautiful thing for us to all be together and that's kind of what it felt like when we're ending the show because we're all just really just like one big family your character had a real arc. Everybody again. Your character had a real arc too. I mean, Willie Jack did, which which is always great when you're on a series. Um, did did you get uh, rejected for roles a lot because you were native when you were younger, Paulina? Uh, it seems like I mean you've come along at the right time in terms of native casting for sure. I mean, I feel like that's why I didn't get a lot of roles is because I was native. Growing up, like, I remember, like, I think I was, like, 18 at the time. I was, like, doing an audition. I was doing auditions. I started doing auditions since I was, like, like going to live casting calls since I was, like, seven years old. And then I didn't start getting, I didn't get an agent until I was, like, 17. And then I did, like, a whole year of auditions. And I just remember, like telling my mom like no one's gonna pick me like I'm native like no no one's gonna hire like a native person like you just don't see native actors out there like you're not gonna see a native person on like Fast and Furious or something or like you know it just wasn't a thing at the time like I just did not like I believed in myself but I at the in the back of my head, I was like, you know what, like, because I'm Native, I don't think I'm going to get any roles. But then when I got this audition, it was like the dream role. And it's like everything I already wanted. And it kind of like made it so easy in a sense, if that makes any any sense. Totally. I know I mean, this show, all by itself, it seems, Pauline, has really just opened so many doors for Native for native actors and for that whole community. I was, you know, I was speaking to Lily Gladstone, who I know was on your show, uh, a few weeks back, just to, you know, I like to drop her name when I can. Uh, and she was talking about how inspired she is, you know, to see so much Native talent working right now in Hollywood, not just on Res Dogs, but, you know, all over. Uh, and yeah. obviously, it hasn't been the case forever. Yeah, that's, that's honestly, like, what I, like, always, like, dreamed of seeing. Because growing up, you just see, like, Native, like, stereotypical, like, Native people. Um, like, on top of a mountain singing. And we're not all like that. We're, we're actually funny people. And we deserve a chance. We deserve to be up there too as much as anybody else and wait sorry I got, uh, no no I, I'm what was the question again no it was just about how how things have opened up so much now because of res dogs and and in yeah. terms of the kind and the quality of roles that na natives and, and indigenous people are are being cast for now I mean you know uh as you were in, insinuating I mean I am more than old enough, Paulina, to remember when Native people were cast, as you know, as the squaws and the savages and the white cowboys were the heroes and John Wayne wiped them out and everybody cheered. It's just, it's embarrassing to think about this now, that this was what we accepted as, as okay back, you know, and I'm only talking about maybe 30 years, 25, 30 years ago. Yeah, like, I just remember, like, watching TV and then, like, someone being like oh that's a native and then everybody like look at the tv and then it's just like some like stereotypical like you know like and it's like it's not us like it's they say it's native but it's not 
being told in a truthful way. And that was my goal, like, when it came to, like, acting. And if I was going to, like, do native, like, like, native, like, roles, I wanted to show our humor and how we actually are and, like, give that a chance, not let people who are, like, real feel alone. That was my biggest goal because growing up, I've always seen people, like, native people, like, not being truthfully shown on TV. And that's what I wanted to do. It's like show people that we're actually funny and we're actually pretty cool. And we're not all like, you know, like spiritual, like, you know. Right. It's all like creatures. medicine man and spirits and all that stuff. Yeah. I know. I mean, why can't you just be regular people in, in, in society in 2024? Why does it have to be? always metaphysical and mystical yeah you know? right like we've never had a show like this and for it to be shown for it to come to life made by native people acted by native people and yeah it's like my dream show i'm pretty sure i would like be obsessed with this show even if i wasn't on it like right yeah of course. I mean, you know, I mean, it shocks me, Paulina, too, that this is the first ever TV series to exclusively feature Native writers and directors, along with an almost entirely Native uh, North American cast. And I'm like, yeah. really? It took until the t the 2020s for that to happen. It, it's it's shocking. Yeah. But you must have really felt in your element to be part of that and to be part of a show that was so uh that was so so full of, of native people and and you know had a had had that mindset and that that vibe yeah like i like felt it deep down that one day it was gonna happen i just didn't know i was gonna be part of it so it was so beautiful amazing overwhelming and yeah, just special in general. It's a really good show. It, it's really an exceptional show. That's the thing is I haven't met anyone that hasn't loved Reservation Dogs, and and you can see just how much progress is made. And, and through the sh and it wasn't trying to push any any native agenda. That's the thing that's beautiful about it is it, it's just it is what it is. And it's yeah. just it's just fun and presents itself as a regular show that just happens to have native be about native stories. Yeah. Um, um you guys, but you know, the community even has its own like superhero now, right? With like Alakwa Cox and Echo. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's a that's real progress. And maybe yeah. um, and maybe maybe Paulina Alexis will be next. Yeah, hopefully I'll be next. I, I would love to do like superhero role action movie role i want to act with jack black one day I, I like doing comedy i like comedy and you know like um, kid shows i feel like that's where i'll thrive a lot and like action i love action so we'll see did you feel but like you were doing it felt, it felt like you were able to do comedy and drama all in one with this show because it wasn't yeah, just I comedy. Could do it, it, it had so many sides. Yeah, I could do it all. I can make you laugh, I can make you cry. And yeah, I think. What was I going to say? I'll come back, but sorry. It's okay. <laughs> I, I, I just, you know, not to, not to, to push on this too hard, but I remember, again, having my thinking about uh, Native people totally turned around when I was 13 years old, which was a very long time ago, when I went to see Little Big Man, um, which was kind of a seminal experience for me to see the story told from the other side of the Native people, having been horribly unjustly slaughtered and victims by essentially of a genocide. You know, yeah. um, that was just completely eye opening. I imagine you've seen that film. No, uh, I don't. Think oh, really? I've... Oh, I highly recommend it. Um, what is it called? Little Big Man. It came out in 1970. 
Um, and uh, actually, Dustin Hoffman stars as, as the Native American hero. That's the only thing that probably would change today is we wouldn't have Dustin Hoffman playing the the, you know, <laughs> the indigenous hero Jack Crab. But still, yeah, um, it's an amazing film and really turned my thinking around. I also read "Bury My Heart at Wounded Knee" when I was very young. Mm, uh, yes. which was, devastating eye-opener, you know, taking a sledgehammer to the whole narrative of how the West was won. But yeah. um, what was life like growing up on a reservation for you? Mm, we, I live with, we probably have like seven people in a two-bedroom house, one bathroom. Me and all my brothers and my mom, my mom is the type to like take her clothes off her back and like give it to you if you needed it. So, um, I think throughout my childhood, like most the time we've had, like my mom would take in some of my cousins if they like needed a place to stay. So our place was always really crammed. And your mom yeah. couldn't say no. Yeah, she couldn't say no. She has a big heart, and honestly, we like, um struggled a lot financially and I never felt like it like growing up like I've felt I've always felt like rich and like love and family and everything like so much I've never like felt like I was actually really struggling with my family but we were and I even remember like my brothers like getting into acting too and like all of us like making skits in our like little cameras and like in our old small house and yeah we didn't even have clean running water back home like on reservations like in Canada most reservations don't have clean water did you know that to this day I had no idea wow so yeah. how, how did how did you get through that? Did did you did you get sick more often because of that? Yeah, we get um, I think we have like we get like water money now because a lot of people got sick and um, yeah, we would just have like a water truck come in like fill up a well and we would have to go to the city like drive all the way to the city and get like drinkable like water tanks and stuff like that so just like I don't know chilling with all my cousins every day going to school and like being related to like basically everybody in my school and it sounds like except yeah. for some issues with some 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 poverty it sounds like it sounded like yeah. a pretty good life though because you you certainly didn't lack in love and friendship Mm -mm, I didn't, I don't know, like, I really, I had a beautiful childhood. I had a really good childhood. And, yeah, that's just what it was like for me growing up. And you got to um, ride horses a lot, learned, learned to be a big horse rider from what I hear. Uh, actually, no, I did not get into horses until, like, three years oh. ago. Oh, really? I wanted to ride some, but, like, like I said, we weren't really, like, we couldn't afford it. Otherwise, I probably would have begged my mom. Like, I always cried for a horse, but we could never afford it. But now that I'm older and I make my own money, I can do whatever I want. And, yeah, I started horse racing and taught myself how to ride. And, yeah. See, that's another one of my own issues with my head. I'm thinking, well, of course, they're on a reservation. Of course, horses were just hanging around. No. But yeah. I mean, there was horses, but they're wild, and, like, you have to, like, go chase them and, like, train them, but that's too much. That's too wild for me. I mean, you could if you want to, like, you know, my uncles do stuff, but, yeah. What would, what would you like to do next uh, professionally, Paulina? What would, uh, are, are you, uh, are you looking at any script shed or anything? What, what's next for you? I want to start directing and producing and writing and that's a like, lot of that's a lot of, that's a lot of that's a lot of stuff <laughs> I can do it all I feel like I can and 
no I can like I believe you even like growing up like I would like and even the skit the skits we make I would like like do everything I would like direct edit it and I would act and I've always just naturally found like love for it. even like I want to be in front of the camera but I also want to be behind the camera making sure it's good I think while we we're filming the show actually Sterling can even say this too like I think in between takes I would run to the monitor see if they would do like a replay or like see what the scene would look like I was always like the only one running back and forth to the monitors to check it out and like secretly shadow and you know what I mean so yeah good for you I'm sure things are going to come through for you you know what just stay focused on that yeah. uh, and if if you if you have other aspirations besides acting writing directing producing that increases your number of possible jobs by a by a large margin yeah so good for you I think actually uh we're going to leave things there. Uh, all three seasons of Reservation Dogs are streaming on Hulu. Uh, yep. Paulina Alexis, best of luck to you this Emmy season. And thanks for joining us today at Gold Derby. Thank you so much for having me. 